Hey everyone, welcome back to John's Watch. Today I'm taking a look at a new game called The Thaumaturge. This game was released on Steam on March 4th, 2024. Its regular price is $44.99 Canadian, or your regional equivalent, and it's developed by Fool's Theory and published by 11-Bit Studios. Fool's Theory have previously worked on a remake of a game called Seven, and they're also right now working on a remake of the first Witcher game. 11-Bit Studio is just a publisher in this case, but they are also a developer because they developed the Frostpunk games. I assume the second one is also done by 11-Bit Studios. So interesting that they both develop and publish, although they're just publishing in the case of the Thaumaturge. The Steam store page describes it as a story-driven RPG with morally ambiguous choices taking place in the culturally diverse world of early 20th century Warsaw. In this world, salutors exist, esoteric beings that only thaumaturges can truly perceive and use for their needs. Uh, I wasn't familiar with the word salutor before playing this game. J just think of it like, like a spirit that you can control in battle kind of thing. Uh, we'll, we'll get into it, but that's, that's kind of what it means. Also sort of like a Pokemon. <laughs> so like I said, this is a story-driven RPG. It's shown in a kind of a top-down, isometric style. It looks a bit like Disco Elysium, uh, you know, quite reading heavy, story heavy uh, games like that. So I figured I would put a bit of time into it before doing my video and then uh, I would either talk over some gameplay, which is obviously what's happening here, or I would find a good point where I could do live commentary over it. And so at the time of recording, I've played for 1.2 hours, 72 minutes and I'm not going to be playing anymore. I was so incredibly bored, just 20 minutes in. There was just everything about this game was, was coming at me to make me not enjoy it in the slightest. Just I, the, the setting, the story, the people, the characters, the voice acting especially. I was just so bored. Even the combat, when it came up, like it, it, would, it would come up as like a nice little break from from the story and the the horrible voice acting and even, even the combat was just just really boring to me slightly better than the rest of the game but man yeah like 20 minutes in i was like looking at my playtime in steam and i was like it's only been 20 minutes i have to keep playing <laughs> and uh, that feeling didn't go away um as, as soon as i finished the prologue and and got to the the start of the first chapter i thought that's enough you know i I've been bored the entire time I've played this. Uh, it's it's not going to improve for me personally. And this is really quite interesting because uh, Taylor, I'll uh, have a link to Taylor's channel, Tease Table, uh, in the description, if I remember. I'm really good at remembering those links. He also did a, an early game impressions video on this game. Uh, and I think he said he played about two hours when he, he did that video. And he's planning on playing more of it to do like a follow-up video. And uh, I can see in Steam that he's got like 7 point something out, 7.2 hours in it. So obviously this is, this is doing it for Taylor. Um, I know in his video he said that he found this setting of early 20th century Warsaw uh, very interesting. It doesn't do anything for me at all, but uh, I think your mileage will probably vary depending on whether you find 20th century Europe and, and Russia interesting or not uh i just don't and the game didn't do anything to to really change my mind on on whether i like that setting or not so in this game you play as a character called victor um his name is spelt with a w but he does uh tell people his name is pronounced victor uh i don't know why he like he makes a point with the, the very first character he meets he says, uh, my name's Victor, with a W, not a V, but it's still pronounced Victor, so I, I don't really know what the significance of that is. So you play as Victor, he is the titular Thaumaturge, uh, which is kind of like a miracle worker, a, a, a witch kind of thing. <laughs> they supposedly perform miracles, but in, in this game, uh, a Thaumaturge is essentially someone who can control these salutors, kind of demon things, and have a, a sort of heightened sense of perception. They can examine items or, 
are just things in the world around them and they can sense like who touched this item, uh, what their, their thoughts are, they can kind of sense emotions in items. And basically your role seems to be uh, catch all the salutors like a real Pokemon master and also solve mysteries, uh, be a detective kind of thing. The way your heightened uh, perception translates into a, a gameplay mechanic is you right click if you're using mouse and keyboard, uh, which I, I don't even know if I use the keyboard. I think I played everything with just the mouse. Uh, you right click on the mouse and your your thaumaturge's senses will tingle and uh, it'll, it'll show a little red smoky trail that'll uh, take you to uh, your, your quest marker kind of thing. You don't have a quest marker, but you've, you've got a... Uh, kind of a quest list open on the side of the screen and uh, whichever one you've got toggled you right click and it'll direct you to the next stage of that quest and this can direct you to like I said finding items on the ground that you need to uh, perceive to, to figure out what it, their significance uh, characters to talk to um, houses to, to visit locations to visit things like that and this is something that I, I read in the reviews on Steam, uh, but something I found even in just my very short time playing the game was I was pretty much just constantly right-clicking uh, to find my next quest marker, next objective, uh, next person I needed to talk to, next item I needed to find. It felt like a very passive gameplay experience. I feel like I didn't really have to engage in the game very much. I would just kind of let it wash over me. I would right click to, to find the right place to go, click on it, advance through some dialogue. The game would uh, make connections for me. Uh, it would basically do all the detective part for me. Basically, once you find a specific combination of items or, or people, or I guess, uh, the game will say like, oh, you can make a connection now and you make the connection that puts it up on the screen, there's the connection you've made, uh, and that's your detective work done. There's, there's really no thinking involved, uh, so far at least. Um, I did, I've did. i only done the prologue, but I don't... I mean, I imagine the prologue's a pretty decent uh, sampling of the game, so I, I don't really think the, the detective part is going to change too much. But yeah, it, it just felt very passive, and, and I'm not one who likes to play um, like those super immersive games. Uh, I'm thinking like the new Assassin's Creed games, you can like have like detailed quest markers or uh, like immersive quest markers where um, if you're playing on like the immersive mode, uh, your, your journal on the side of the screen will just give you like hints where you need to go. It'll be like, oh, this person was spotted near the tallest tree in this wood or whatever. And you have to like look for yourself to find the tallest tree and, uh, you know, make your way there. I don't play on that mode. I like being told where to go because <laughs> uh, I'm a busy man. I don't have uh, a million hours. I don't have a hundred hours to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla anymore. <laughs> but yeah, even as someone who, who likes being told where to go, this game just felt very, very passive. As this is a story-driven game, there's a lot of dialogue. There's a lot of cutscenes. Uh, I was going to say, thankfully, it's all voice acted. But my god, the voice acting is flipping dreadful in this game. The main character, Victor, legitimately sounds like he's drunk. The voice, I'm sh I swear the voice actor was drunk when he was recording his lines. He's slurring over his lines. He sounds completely devoid of emotion. Just com totally painful to listen to. Um, his voice acting in particular is part of what made me feel so bored because I'm just listening to him drone on just slurring over his words. I'll, I'll try and get a little compilation of some of the, the worst bits in this video. Take this down, please. Arrived. Very beautiful views. People honest at first glance. Sincerely, your barely living cripple. The village is what interests me. I first learned of you in Paris. It permeates every level of your personality, your faith, your abilities. I wanted to talk. Ma'am, please open the door. But just, just listening to this, I, I couldn't feel any enthusiasm for this game because the character has no enthusiasm at all. And all the voice acting is is pretty much just as bad. There's some slightly better, like uh, the voice acting for character Rasputin is fine. It's passable. It, it's not as bad as Victor. But some of the other ones just sound dreadful. 
the combat is turn-based, uh, kind of traditional RPG kind of combat. Uh, I'll have the combat up on screen so you can see it. Um, in his video, Taylor said it's uh, or compared it a little bit to something like Persona or Shin Megami Tensei, uh, where you your character controls demons, monsters, whatever, and you can attack with them. And it's it's a pretty apt comparison, honestly. Uh, and as someone who loves Persona and likes Shin Megami Tensei, uh, that really appealed to me. So uh, I was quite interested in the combat. But the combat ended up being also quite boring. Um, you, you'll be able to see it on screen right now. But basically you choose Victor's actions and you also uh, choose whatever Salutor you're controlling's actions. There's a little bit of strategy involved where you, if you if you drain all of your enemies' uh, focus, focus points, uh, which is indicated by little yellow dots above their health, um, you can perform a, a, a critical attack. I, I don't remember what the, the actual attack's called. Um, like a visceral attack or something, which you can only do when your opponents had their focus dropped. Um, so there's a little bit of strategy in there. Um, there's three difficulty options. There's like story difficulty, normal and, and challenging, something like that. Um, so you, you can tweak the combat uh, to make it as difficult as you want kind of thing. The combat's okay, like I said. Um, interestingly, uh, there's no like potions or anything in the game, no items, no healing items. Uh, so basically your health actually resets to full at the start of every encounter, um, which is kind of nice. You know, it, it, it just means every fight is going to be as tough as that fight is. Uh, it, you're not going to be worn down by having to do multiple fights in a row or anything. Even just in the, the hour or so that I played, I, I found I wasn't doing much variety in the combat. Um, for example, my Salutor uh, has an ability where he, he has this one attack where it'll do more damage the more health the enemy has left. So I always open with that attack because it's always going to do the most damage. Uh, depending on the number of focus points my enemy had, I would either drain the focus points and then follow up with the, the critical attack, or I would just spam my, my fastest attack because that usually worked out pretty well. I think I'm going to be in the minority here with uh, not enjoying this game because it's sitting at mostly positive reviews on Steam right now. 78% uh, reviews are positive. And I, I think this is probably going to be like another Disco Elysium for me. I mean, that one I think has overwhelmingly positive reviews and I absolutely despise that game uh, and dropped it after just two hours or something. Uh, so it definitely gave me some Disco Elysium vibes. Um, but I think I probably liked this more than Disco Elysium, <laughs> and I didn't like this game. Technically, it, it's good. It's got a lot of good graphics options. It's got, uh, several, uh, up, upscalers, whatever, uh, DLSS. It's got the Intel one, and it's got FSR. I did notice a, a pretty huge, uh, improvement from turning DLSS on. Uh, kind of... I usually try and start with it off, just because it gives you a bit of a cleaner image. Uh, so I started with it off, tweaked some settings, and I got it to just about uh, 60 FPS, which is fine, but I was hoping to push it to around 100. Um, so I just left my settings as they were and then turned DLSS on uh, on the balance preset, and I was up to 100 FPS pretty much all the time, so a uh, very good implementation of DLSS. It's also got some very good accessibility options. Uh, I used one in this game. There's an option to uh, increase the font size. And I had laser eye surgery uh, more than two months ago now. And I can see pretty much everything except for computer screens are still uh, quite difficult for me to, to look at for a long time. Uh, like when I'm at work, I work on a computer all day. Uh, I bump all my, my windows, I, I go into the, the windows settings and in the accessibility settings you can uh, increase the scale of everything on your computer. Uh, so when I'm at work I have the scale set to 125% because uh, just regular 100% is, is too small for me to read all day. Um, but yeah, the, the Thaumaturge has an option to in, in, increase the scale and increase the font size, which was a godsend to me, so that is uh, just a, a wonderful 
accessibility option that I was I was very grateful for. <laughs> That's uh, pretty much all I have to say on the game. Um, wasn't a fan of it, so I'm not going to play any more of it. If you want a more in-depth look at the game, I would definitely recommend going to check out Taylor's channel. Uh, I'll definitely, definitely have a link to it uh, in the description or in the comments, maybe. Probably just in the description. Because um, I know he wants to do a follow-up on the game. And honestly, by the time my video's out, his follow-up might already be out. So go check out Taylor's channel. Give him a, give him a, the old subscribe. Um, I think he went more in-depth in his uh, first impressions on the game than I have in mine. He played a little bit longer than I did. And he also had very different opinions on it than I did. So check out both his videos on the Thaumaturge. If there's only one, the second one's coming at some point. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!